Hello, Jose Rodriguez back again. In this video, I'm going to attempt to walk you all through how I print images onto Hansen watercolor paper. I'm going to go ahead and use Lightroom as this is what most people will use other than Photoshop. As you can see, I have an image open. It's a landscape and I processed it a specific way. I began by lowering the highlights all the way to zero, raising the shadows all the way to max. And then while pressing the Alt key on a Windows machine, I set my white point, as you can see, the little blue points. And then I set my black point, And you can see that represented by those little tiny dark spots. Okay, so now I have a white point and a black points correctly set. Next thing I did was basically I just contrast to my taste and I set it to about 30. I also increased the clarity and the vibrance. I then went over to sharpening and in this case because I have a lot of very fine detail in this photo I went ahead and used the masking option and that basically allows me to isolate areas that I want the sharpening to be applied to. Only the areas that are being masked are going to be affected. So as you can see there's no sky whatsoever. The sky is completely black. The only areas that are being affected are the little edges of all of the detail structures that are located in the landscape. We do not want any kind of noise that may exist on the sky to be sharpened. Now the reason I have made this so crunchy and as you can see I've increased my sharpening to pretty high 127. Let's go ahead and make it 130 just to have a nice even number. Now remember the uncoated Canson watercolor paper has a lot of dot gains so we want the image to begin rather crunchy over sharpened in a slightly bit more saturation than you would normally have on a, on a coated paper. So that's just something I have learned using this particular paper which I love to use. I enable profile correction so that it knows what lens I shot with and so on. The camera remove chromatic aberration. I'm going to also add a little bit of noise reduction maybe just in the neighborhood of 20 and I also added a bit of vignetting just a tiny bit. We'll go ahead and hit print and I have my printer already set up the Epson 3800. This is the one that I use for matte paper. I have a preset for a 17 by 24 and we are set to go. Matte paper, quality, no color adjustment. We are ready. Okay, so here we are now at the printer module after I had set my printer driver parameters. And now we're gonna go ahead and set the borders. I want to have an inch and a quarter border all the way around. So I set my cell size to 21.5 and 14.5. That gives me that required border. All my margins are set to full. I don't worry about margins. And I also, I'm going to add a stroke of maybe two points. And now you see that little sliver where the stroke is? I'm gonna go ahead and zoom to fit because my image is just a tiny bit off of that particular ratio that this created 21.5 times 14.5 cell or window. So I have to zoom in to fill. It's not gonna really affect too much. It's just a tiny amount of filling. All right, so now we're gonna skip on down here and go to our color management setup. Now I'm using matte paper. So we'll change it to matte. And I'm gonna use my output sharpening as high. So now I'm gonna choose my ICC profile. And for this particular paper, I like to use the watercolor paper for the 3800. And that seems to work pretty well. I did create my own profile, but it actually caused the shadows to block up. So this actually allows me to have slightly more open shadows. So we'll go ahead and choose the watercolor and we are ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and print it. Okay, here we are in front of the printer. I have my paper ready to go. This is originally 18 by 24. I trimmed off one inch from the long edge to give me a 17 by 24 sheet of paper. Now, this is 300 gram paper. It's very stiff, as you can see, and rather thick. So you have to load it from the rear feeder. Now, I already set that on the driver. Make sure you do that. Otherwise, the driver is going to say, you loaded me in the wrong feed. So it's going to actually give you an error. It's possibly spit the paper out. Now in order to do this, sometimes it takes one or two tries, but you just basically make sure that your rear guide is adjusted properly. You're going to insert it 
keeping it against the right guide as evenly as possible and you hold it until it when it reaches the bottom you just hold it and we have a paper error a loading error let's try again again it's kind of a finicky process okay I think this will work this time yep and you know that is working because you will see that the paper extends about maybe I would say about half an inch past the edge of the platen or the platen and then it'll uh, check the front edge make sure that it is running straight that it's not skewed and once you have that all set you're ready to print so let's go ahead and hit the print button and we'll watch the print come out all right the prints being spooled as I speak but once it receives the full file I have a set so that it doesn't start printing until the full file has been sent over and here we go it's time for it to print now if you notice the editing method that I utilize creates sort of a painterly look which is what I'm after I'm after a watercolor looking type final print I don't want a photographic rendition if I wanted that I would go ahead and get a nice smooth paper that's coated for inkjet but this is texture for watercolor and it really does not blend itself or lend itself for super you know Ansel Adam type perfectly photographic renditions of landscapes so I use this specifically for landscapes I do not use it for portraits it really doesn't lend itself for that anything that's graphic anything that has let's just say no people in it unless you want to turn them into watercolors and that's what I usually use this paper for any any other type of print I will use another paper for it all right so it's beginning to emerge once I finish printing it I'll go ahead and give you a close-up of it it has really really good detail nice sharp detail everything looks semi photographic somewhat painterly just the way I like it now the last thing that I will do to this once it dries is I will overcoat it with a coat of protectant spray and I may use either matte or the slightly glossy one that I have and the glossy one actually makes the blacks a little bit richer so actually gives you the impression of increasing contrast and saturation and it, it works wonderfully it actually gives it a slight slight satin um, look to the paper this this paper just soaks up ink like a sponge you can I can feel the uh, slight dampness now once this fully dries and I treat it with the overcoat I'll go ahead and uh, take a shot of it for you all and there you are okay and there's the final result after spraying I'm using my illuminator bouncing it off my ceiling so that I don't get any glare off the surface I tried direct lighting it and it was causing too much glare even the matte paper even though it's not very reflective it actually does create a lot of glare so hopefully you can get an idea how nice this print turned out and see how simple the process is if you just have a printer that uses k3 inks and of course that would allow you to use matte black and that's what you need to do for this type of treatment then you just use the epson watercolor paper icc profile and you're good to go all right so if you like this video please like it please share please subscribe of course and until the next time happy printing and bye bye